Hey everyone, a lot of you have been asking for another Flat Earth video, so I had a look around and found a video called Flat Earth in 5 Minutes, which basically goes through some of the main arguments people try to use to prove the Earth is flat. It does use some arguments I handled in previous videos, so I thought I'd take this one not only as an opportunity to present some new rebuttals to Flat Earth arguments, but also to perhaps better explain ones I've already dealt with. Let's begin. Water, when unmanipulated, is to find its level. So whether you look at a cup of water, a bathtub, a swimming pool, a lake, or the ocean, it's flat. Of course, natural motion is not considered and doesn't equal a curve. Okay, so what you're forgetting with this one is that there's a huge difference between the bathtub and the Earth. Don't forget, the Earth's pretty huge, and we're looking at such a small portion of it, you're not really going to notice any curve at all. We have zero authentic pictures of the Earth and they're all composites, and NASA even admits that they Photoshop Earth images. It is Photoshopped, but it's, it's, has to be. Just because an image is Photoshopped doesn't mean it's completely fake. It's not easy to take a photo of the entire world, so composites are necessary a lot of the time in order to create a full picture of the Earth, and other methods of image editing are often just to change the contrast or colour depth of images, often just to make them easier to see and reveal detail. Just because something has been edited doesn't mean it's completely fake. In fact, sometimes photo editing can even make a more accurate representation of reality. For example, here's some live footage of the planet Saturn I took with a telescope. Now, look at the image I was able to make it into by processing the video. This isn't an inaccurate image. All it's doing is taking the best frames from different parts of the raw footage and compiling them together. But let's just agree for the sake of argument that all of those images are fake. What does that have to do with the Earth being flat? Just because NASA faked a bunch of images doesn't prove the Flat Earth model at all. It only proves that NASA faked all those images. Heck, it doesn't even disprove the globe model. Even without photos, there is stacks upon stacks of evidence Earth's a sphere. And all of that's available with a quick Google search. On numerous occasions, NASA admits that we can't go beyond low Earth orbit, which is between 99 miles and 1200 miles away. The interesting thing is that the moon is said to be 238,000 miles away, which is a difference of 236,800 miles. Okay, when NASA says they can't go beyond low Earth orbit, they're not really talking about some physical impossibility, but more of a practical one. Also, in this case, I'd imagine they're only referring to humans as not only is it not really needed for humans to go into deep space at the moment, but there are also a lot of practical issues and safety issues when sending people out into deep space. When the Apollo 11 astronauts landed on the moon, there was a good chance they weren't going to come back. In fact, there have been lots of issues with travelling beyond Earth orbit, Apollo 13 being a prime example. So what NASA's really saying is that deep space manned missions are just unreliable at this point. No matter if you're on the ground, on top of a building, a mountain, a hot air balloon, an airplane, or looking at high altitude amateur balloon footage, the horizon never fails to rise right to your eyes. I see these sorts of videos all the time of balloons being sent to the outer atmosphere, and I don't think a lot of these flat earthers really grasp how big Earth actually is. This thing is 40,000 kilometers around, and going up a few dozen miles isn't really enough for any sort of curve to be noticeable. And also, I don't understand what people mean when they say the horizon rises to eye level. Whether Earth's a sphere or a disk, as you move away from it, the horizon will move. This fact doesn't change, even if the Earth was flat. Whether you are looking at Toronto's skyline from Niagara on the lake, 31 miles away, Chicago's skyline from Union Pier, 43 miles away, or even Oahu from Kauai, which is up to 108 miles away from center to center, or 73 miles away from the closest points. You will not see any curvature where it's supposed to be. According to the Pythagorean theorem, which states that the curvature of the Earth is 8 inches per mile squared, Oahu should not be visible whatsoever, but you can see the whole thing. No, I obviously don't have time to go through each of these examples. I think I actually already tackled the Chicago one in another video. So I'm just going to cover the Oahu to Kauai one here. So the distance from the southernmost point of Kauai, around the area of Lihue, to the highest peak on Oahu, the distance is about 84 miles. Now taking the elevation of Lihue, around 220 feet, we should find that we should be able to see anything on Oahu that's over about 2,900 feet tall. Luckily for us, the highest peak on Oahu is about 4,000 feet, so we should easily be able to see the top of it. In 1887, Albert Michelson and Edward Morley conducted what's known as the Michelson-Morley experiment. 
this experiment was attempting to prove the speculated motion of the Earth around the Sun, and when it failed, Albert Einstein was forced to form the theory of relativity to overcome this problem. In fact, anytime mainstream science is faced with undesirable results, they create a workaround which isn't real science at all. This one actually came up in an old Flat Earth video of mine, and I think I misinterpreted the argument. What the Michelson-Morley experiment was actually trying to prove was the existence of what they thought was the luminiferous ether. Basically, at the time, people were questioning the properties of light. People were confused about how, if light's a wave, why doesn't it need a medium to travel through like sound? So the experiment was basically trying to bounce light in different directions to see if the speed of the light was affected by the direction of this hypothetical medium. After loads of tries and many different orientations of the experiment, it was basically proved that the ether wasn't actually real. Now this has absolutely nothing to do with the movement of the Earth. In fact, by the time of these experiments, the movement of the Earth was already common knowledge. The Sun is claimed to be 93 million miles away, with a radius of over 400,000 miles, but can easily be proven to be much closer and smaller by tracing the crepuscular rays back to its origin in the sky. If the Sun were indeed 93 million miles away, it would simply be impossible to have angled sun rays, as they should all consistently come in straight. Now this may look like rays leading to a point close on Earth, but what's actually going on here is perspective. As you can see from this animation, these two lines of this train track are completely straight, but when you go down to ground level and look along their length, they seem to become closer together the more distant they get. This is just a simple effect of objects appearing smaller at a greater distance, and is exactly what you're showing in those images. According to the globular theory, a lunar eclipse occurs when the Sun, Earth, and Moon are in a direct line. But it is on record that since about the 15th century, over 50 eclipses have occurred while both the Sun and Moon are visible above the horizon. F. H. Cook, The Terrestrial Plane It's a common misconception that the shadow of the Earth causes moon phases. Even the pastors and priests of the science religion readily admit this fact. The interesting thing about moon phases is that they are always the exact same eight phases repeated. But if we were circling around the Sun, these eight phases would inevitably be reversed from the summer to winter seasons. Okay, something I need to ask is, where did he get that diagram? It's just flat out wrong. All of those moons should have the same side of them illuminated by the sun, but for some reason they're being lit from different angles. They should all look the same. Regardless of your point around the sun, the parts of the moon being illuminated shouldn't be any different. Well that's about it for this video, just before I go I'd like to say that I've officially started a Discord server due to popular demand. Feel free to pop down there and say hi, links in the description. Thanks for watching.